Maybe you have a sister or brother that was clubbing and hanging out and partying and now they're like, yo, I stopped smoking weed, I still go to the club and I'm trying to start praying Thor. Like that's where they're at. So build on that. Don't say you're horrible, you're irredeemable. No, no, how can you take that and say, mashallah, that's incredible. Like imagine where you were six months ago and now you're here. Oftentimes we need to help people build their strength and their capacity. When I see people like, oh, I feel a sense of value because you changed. That's very selfish. Allah. I call to God. God is the one who changes. If Allah uses me or uses you, alhamdulillah. I encourage like imams and scholars to engage with counselors, to do focus groups with young people and just listen to what they're going through, man. And to think about the difficulties that they face. And then you write a prescription. Actually, my students told me to do it because I used to sit with them. This was back in the Snapchat days and they were like, you should just like do these like on Snapchat. I answered a person's question and the next thing I know after after Tarawi, like I open up my phone and it's like 500 questions, man, in like an hour. And then I realized the knowledge that we have is not ours. The cut of the knowledge is that you have to give it to people if you have it. I was talking to parents once and they were like, can you really tell us the questions they ask? They really like bad. I said, if I tell you the most common question I get, you're not gonna believe me. And they're like, what? I was like, how can I be closer to Allah? Like, subhanAllah, what a generation of people, man. The second question is eyebrows. You know what I'm saying? But the first question, right? How do I draw near to Allah? How do I repent? How do I stop sinning? How do I come close to Allah? We left teaching, especially after 9-11. We've gotten more into like entertainment instead of education. Imam Abu Hanifa used to complain because his mother would listen to the storyteller more than she listened to him. And she one time actually took him and said, let's go ask the Sheikh. And then the storyteller was like, that's my Sheikh. That, your son is my teacher. She's like, that's my son. What I would suggest is that we really need to cultivate Muslim unity. And I think one of the reasons that we divide ourselves is like, we don't have patience. We put on great conferences, right? We put on great performances and we're great at that but when a single mother can't find value within her local mosque when you know a brother or sister goes to the msa and is mistreated when the convert is lonely on eid like i know converts who on eid men have fish and chips man we don't give people in our local communities value bro so then what are we talking about at a global level like if i can't bring love to people who are closest to me in my community then how can I talk about love and unity across the globe?